I say lay, you say erring. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are talking about a gorgeous topic that is on the top of everybody's mind. Today we are talking all about the categories of hair products and hair product layering. It's going to be a, a rousing episode. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, let's get into it. Before we dive in, let's get some coffee. Let's talk about categories of hair product. Hair products have become like this really convoluted, like hard thing to kind of understand, but I want you to know that it's actually like not that hard. It's kind of fun and I just don't want you to be like overwhelmed or intimidated by hair care. Think of it as like an artist having like a bunch of different colors to choose from when they're painting something. That's really what hair products are. They're just like tools for you to paint with, right? If you look at my hair styling bag, it's like, 85% JBN hair. I love JBN hair. I'm always formulating with it. I'm always styling with it. So that is why naturally for me, like I just use a lot of it, but that doesn't mean that you can't use other ones. So in the iconic words of Rachel Ray, when she taught me how to make, taught me how to make this ice cream cake in the nineties on her cooking show, not in real life, but she taught us this like really cool, like ice cream cake that used like vanilla cake with like strawberry ice cream. I'm going with chocolate ice cream cause I love chocolate. I cannot get enough of it. But she was like, if you don't like vanilla cake and strawberry ice cream, just keep the technique and switch the flavors, right? So yes, I talk a lot about JV and hair, but you, there's a lot of great hair care companies out there. So the first tool that we could talk about is detanglers and like leave-in conditioners. And they kind of essentially do do similar things. Cause even if something is a detangler, it's probably gonna leave some moisture or some sort of like, you know, emollient like slip through the hair. Cause like that's how it's gonna detangle, which will also make your hair feel softer. Do we have any other leave-in conditioners or, oh, you know, we can do it graphically girl. Yeah, we have yes, bitch. Yes. Obviously, I love this leave-in conditioner and detangler, but you know Jennifer Aniston, honey, she's got her Lola V. There's this one. Ah, like Aveda has a good detangler. They're like Amika, I'm sure has a great detangler. Way, I'm sure has a great detangler. Like lots of people have a great detangler. Then you're going to have like your liquids, creams. There's like hair lotions. There's serums. And those typically tend to be more of like, you know, this sort of like consistency, but even our serum, like it starts looking really lotiony, but when you like rub it into the hands and put some body heat on it, it really like melts and it melts into the hair really seamlessly. This is our um, instant recovery serum, but like another one that comes to my mind, like any of like the Shuamora, like styling creams, Kristen S's styling creams, or like Kevin Murphy's like more styling like creams. I like to think of instant recovery serum as like your gateway uh, heat protectant or like your gateway hair product. Cause if you're one of those people who says like, I hate heat styling products. I just don't like the feeling of product in my hair. This is a really good one because it won't leave any stickiness, no feeling in the hair, but it will protect your hair from heat. And it will also just like balance your hair out. Even if you don't put heat on your hair, it'll just give you like a little bit of shine, a little bit of polish. But most of the times like uh, serums or creams will usually have some sort of heat protection. Sometimes air dry creams won't have a heat protection, but at least it's like a little bit of like a buffer like to the hair. They typically are a little bit like heavier on the hair. They typically will like fill in the crevices and the cracks of the hair shaft more than like what an oil would um, or like a leave-in conditioner or like a detangler. There's like a little bit, you know, the molecules are a little bit thicker of a formula. Then you have like foams and like mousses. So I love a foam, I love a mousse. Usually a mousse will be like an aerosol, like that really makes it go <sighs> A foam typically is aerosol free, but foams and mousses typically are going to make the hair more voluminous, give it more body. There are also like curl enhancing mousses and foams. Like I love the Way Dad one. In fact, Way Dad just like a line that I think is great. It works really well. This is the Shuamura Kaze Wave Curly Foam, which is fabulous. Um, this is our gorgeous and body foam, which can be used on curly hair or straight hair, like universal hair types. Anytime you want it bigger, you can use it. I also do love our foam for like slick updos and like, like a slick little, like, you know, slick back moment. You can like brush your hair back with the foam and it gives it really great control and shine. We love a multi-purpose queen. Then there's obviously like hairsprays, which you know we love a good hairspray. That's gonna give you great control. They will often give you shine, definition, depending on the kind. Then there's dry shampoos, a massive category. There are aerosol-based dry shampoos. There's DIY dry shampoos that you can make from like home-based goods. Um, and then there's also like pump dry shampoos that don't rely on aerosol for dispersal. I think some general pointers for dry shampoo is, typically they are never formulated to be like sprayed on your scalp and then 
been like left alone and like, okay, you're done. Typically you're gonna wanna like spray it on your scalp or pump it under your scalp. And then you're gonna wanna like work it through with your fingers or you're gonna wanna like blow dry it back into your hair like with, you know, your typical styling routine. Like if you ever see someone like with a bunch of like product glommed on their hair, you know, kind of circles or like epicenters of like dust white stuff on someone's head. Um, that is often like unworked in dry shampoo. And then their first cousin is like a dry texture spray, which is usually aerosol based. You apply it on dry hair to create like more PC texture. Um, I love like the Orbe dry texture spray. Kevin Murphy has a fabulous one. If you have like really fine hair and it, like your hair doesn't like to stay up in a ponytail or like it's always falling out of braids, I love to like kind of prep the hair in dry shampoo or like a dry texture spray to create that texture to like hold in and updo better. So that's a cool trick. And then there's like hybrid products. Like air dry cream is actually a hybrid product because this is a cream. So it does have like, you know, the texture of a cream, but it also has the hold and the control of a gel because it has our chia seed and our linseed in it, which will give you gel like hold. And the more of this product you use, the more hold it's going to give you. Then you have like, you know, your classic gels, which is just like gel, gel, firmer hold, you know, not really as touchable stiffer you know more hold but great product they just have like their own uses in their own times then you have like these great like texture powders um, these just will give you like great lift body texture these are fun then of course you have hair oils there's so many great like styling oils out there Kerastase oleo relax is a really popular very famous one um, way has a great hair oil I mean everybody has a great hair oil not everyone's is like an Allure Best of Beauty Best hair oil winner like ours, but ours is. Then you also have like pomades. Tancho Stick would be a pomade. Kevin Murphy has some great pomades. I love this one pomade called Magic Move um, by this one company. It's like called Magic Move. Um, I also love Aveda's Control Paste. Pomades are really fun. There's like clay-based pomades. There's more water-based pomades. Pomades can be used on wet hair, on dry hair. They're like a great styling product. And also, products can be layered together. They can also be cocktailed. So layering is when you put products on like one at a time, like layering, like one over the other. Cocktailing is where you mix products together and then kind of apply them all at once. And again, like rules are meant to be broken. So when I was behind the chair doing hair in the salon all the time, I would often cocktail. And cocktailing would be like using like a blowout milk. But if you found that like that blowout milk was a little too heavy or had like too much control, you could cut it with an oil to kind of like water down the formula or like dilute the formula and the oil would add some softness and some shine. One thing I love to cocktail with is like take some air dry cream when on curly hair when it's dry but take like way less like a pea size of air dry cream and then like a few drops of nourishing shine drops mix that together in my hands and then finish by like scrunching that into the hair gorgeous some people's hair works better with cocktailing some people's hair works better with layering it really depends on the individual if you ever see someone giving rules for like lower porosity hair works better like this and higher porosity works better like that. I tend to like shy away from that because sometimes people's hair is high porosity because it's naturally high porosity. Sometimes people's hair, hair is high porosity because they had a bleach and tone or they have like tons of highlights or they're really, really hard on their hair and they don't use heat protectant so it's way more porous. Not all porosity is created equal and every individual's hair is going to act differently based off their hair color history, based off what products they use or don't use, based on if their water is hard or soft, based on their age, based on if they put their hair up all the time, based on if they sleep with their hair down. Like there are so many factors factors that make your hair turn out the way that it is. So just think of like rules as guidelines and parameters. They're not absolute, except for like if you should use heat protectant or not, which you absolutely should. Huh. Order depends on what you're doing, but typically it would go something like, these are like all kind of after things. These are more tending to be before things or after things. Okay, honestly, like, I'm just non-binary, gender non-conforming in all aspects of my life, and I fight the goddamn patriarchy and the binary at every goddamn corner, okay? Literally all these can be used almost in any order, okay? It depends on what you're doing, okay? But the first thing I would do is a detangler um, or a hair refresher. Spray this like a little bit away from your head. Like if you spray it really close, it's gonna like come onto your hair kind of close. You wanna spray it farther away for it to be more of like a gentle mist. Then you're gonna come in with your serum 
Second, serums are typically always going to be your primers or your like porosity equalizer. What that means is, is like my ends are gonna be more porous than my new growth because my ends have been heat styled way more. They've been on my head for way longer. If you have highlighted hair, your hair that's highlighted is going to be more porous than the non-highlighted hair. So you're gonna wanna like kind of balance the hair out. And whether I was styling my hair naturally curly or blowing it out straight, I would actually put this on second, like in this order. So I would do complete conditioning mist first, then I would do, um, instant recovery serum second. But if I was doing it curly, I'd be doing more like this. And straight, I'd be like, you know, not really caring as much. I do like to use a brush to distribute the product through the hair evenly. Um, Cause even if your hair is curly, like manipulating it like this when it's wet is good. Cause then you can go through and set it with a brush, set it with your fingers, you know, do any sort of like finger curling technique you want or even bring back out your natural curl. But if you don't distribute the product all the way throughout the hair, it's gonna take it a little bit more unevenly. The curly girl method is fierce and that's like the lock method, which is like liquid oil cream or it can be liquid cream oil and then like finish with your hold, like your mousse, which we've actually done this video which did that version, but there will always be exceptions to the rule. Like some people will just like want to use whichever method, like try both, try each order, figure out which works best for your hair. You're your own scientist. You're going to figure it out. You're the one who has to live with your hair. So try both techniques, see which works best for you. But I just did complete conditioning mist, instant recovery serum. Then I would do my blowout milk next because I am going to end up blowing my hair out. I'm going to do two pumps of that for my whole head. And I'm concentrating that on my mid links and ends. It is important to remember that if you have like fringe, there's also mid links and ends of the fringe. So don't only get it down here. Like you want to get it on these mid links and ends as well. I do like to start it on the ends and then work my way up because your ends are always going to be more damaged and are going to need more heat protection. Then I would come in with my foam, you know, if I want more body and volume. This is actually a really good example of using like two foams uh, for different reasons. Like you could use the Embody foam on your crown and through your mid links for more body and volume. This foam is going to give you more curl definition, which actually this one will too, but you can also even layer and mix and match mousses to get different effects. I'm going to do my Embody foam. I'm going to do two pumps. Can we talk about this texture? Yes. Is, are there any disadvantages of cocktailing the wrong products? Usually it's not using the wrong products. It's using them in the wrong way. A lot of times when I see people saying like, you know, oh, that air dry cream didn't work for me. It will be like someone who has really fine hair using like eight times more air dry cream than what I would use. Like if you have really fine hair, that's like, you know, no more below your collarbone or like around your collarbone, you can do like this much air dry cream. But if you do like a handful, it's going to be too heavy or maybe not even using enough. Like if you have really dense hair, maybe you didn't use enough products or using them at like the wrong time. Like a really good example would be like if you use air dry cream to round brush your hair, it's just going to give you more texture, more definition. So if you're trying to round brush your hair smooth, you're trying to like get rid of the texture and get rid of the definition. So you're kind of fighting yourself if you're trying to round brush with like a curl cream. You could do some hair oil uh, on your hair wet. Like if I was going to round brush my hair straight and all I had was hair oil, I would put it on my hair wet to give myself some heat protection. But typically I would use this as like a dry oil, like putting it on dry hair to increase shine, but you could absolutely put this on your hair wet. And then these products would be the ones that I would use on my hair when it was already styled and dry. So once my blow dry was done, I might sprinkle this on my roots or even through my ends to create some texture or like to create more um, texture for an updo. Hairspray, I might like spray on a brush and then like brush my hair for flyaways or spray it on a makeup brush and like use that on my hair for flyaways. Um, a pomade, if I was gonna like slick my hair into like, you know, a center part low slung bun or like, you know, style like a short hair style. And this can be wet or a dry friend. This can be a wet or a dry friend. Yeah, even the foam can be a wet or a dry friend if you're using it to like slick back a ponytail. Yeah. So that's layering. That's the type of products. So I think the thing that I really want to leave you with is hairstyling is meant to be an expression of yourself. It's meant to be fun. So if you find yourself getting like frustrated or disheartened or like hard on yourself, just throw your hair back, put a little freaking bobby pin in it, put a hat on and come back when it feels fun again. Like put it down and then come back to it. No one's born knowing how to do it. So keep coming back, keep practicing. And that's layering really. And I love you so much. And I love product layering and I love YouTube and I love you. Oh, and then we're going to do a part two about like how I would style my hair with those gorgeous layering products in it.